Hi everyone, welcome to A plus B I. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be cube rooting a complex number. We have 2 plus 11 I and we're going to be finding the cube roots of this number. I say cube roots because complex numbers has or have three cube roots, unlike real numbers. So to be able to find the cube root of or cube roots of this number, I'm going to set it equal to, guess what? A plus BI, yes, the name of this channel. Now, and then we're gonna cube both sides, obviously, right? We want to find A and B values. A and B are real numbers, be careful about it, they are not complex. So if you cube both sides, well, they are complex, but they're also real. All right, 2 plus 11i. Let me write the a plus bi cubed on the left-hand side. So kind of switch sides here. If you cube a plus bi, you get a cubed and then minus b cubed i plus 3abi, an identity that I use for uh, the cube of a sum or a cube of a difference, uh, 3abi. And then this is multiplied by a plus bi, and this is supposed to equal 2 plus 11i. Again, there are three numbers whose cube equals 2 plus 11i in the complex world, and we're going to find all of them. So let's go ahead and arrange these terms on the left-hand side a little bit, a cubed. And then from here, I get 3ab squared with a minus sign because i squared is negative 1. And then for the imaginary part, I'm getting 3a squared b minus b cubed. That's the imaginary part. And as you know, the real parts equals the real parts, and the imaginary parts should equal imaginary parts. That's how you can set two complex numbers equal to each other. So this is supposed to equal 2, and this is supposed to equal 11. And guess what? That gives us a homogeneous system. And that is a cubed minus 3ab squared equals 2, and 3a squared b minus b cubed equals 11. Anytime you see something like this, you can always think of complex numbers. And they're cubes. Now, to be able to solve the system, since it's homogeneous, I'm going to replace b with something like ta. Okay? And when I do... I'm going to be getting a cubed minus 3a times t squared a squared. That's going to be 3a cubed t squared equals 2. And then at the bottom, I'm going to get 3a cubed t minus t cubed a cubed equals 11. Now, our goal is to get rid of the variables. And we can do that by taking out an a cubed here and dividing it by the other equation with the a cubed outside, 3t minus t cubed, and this is going to be 2 over 11, and a cubed is going to cancel out. Awesome. Now, we can go ahead and cross multiply. That gives us 11 minus 33t squared equals 6t minus 2t cubed. And then let's put everything on the same side and make it a full cubic. If you put everything on the left, you'll get 2 cubed minus 33t squared minus 60 plus 11 equals 0. Now, I want to make this polynomial monic, which means I want to make its leading coefficient 1. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by 4. That gives us 8t cubed minus 132t squared minus 24t plus 44 equals 0. And then I want to write it as follows. This is 2t quantity cubed. This is 33 times 2t squared, 2t or not 2t, minus 12 times 2t plus 44 equals 0. By replacing 2t with something, how about y? And don't ask why. We get y cubed minus 33y squared minus 12y plus 44 equals 0. This is not only a monic polynomial, but it's a very special type because if you check 
the sum of the coefficients, hopefully you did, you're going to realize that they add up to zero. Isn't that awesome? And that means y equals 1 is a solution. And then set it equal to 2t because y is equal to 2t. And from here you get t equals 1 half. Awesome. What is t though, right? We were trying to solve for t all this time. But t is actually b over a. t is b over a. And that's equal to 1 half. Which means a can be written as 2b or not 2b. Yay. Now. We can go ahead and plug this into one of our equations. Which one do you want to use? Doesn't matter. No big deal. Let's use the top one. Now I'm going to replace a with 2b. That's going to give me 8b cubed minus 6b cubed equals 2. And then 2b cubed equals 2. Remember, a and b are real numbers. So from here we get a single solution, b equals 1. And of course, since a is 2b, a becomes 2. So we get the values of a and b from here, and that way we can write one of the cube roots, which you could probably call maybe the principal cube root. I don't know. Probably, right? So I guess we could call this the principal cube root. But anyways, one of the cube roots is equal to 2 plus 1i or just 2 plus i. Here's the million dollar question. What about the other cube roots? We're going to find them. Obviously, this cubic has more than one solution, but by finding y equals 1, we can actually reduce the power. You can divide this polynomial by y minus 1, and then find a quadratic whose roots are going to give us the other cube roots. But guess what? There's an easier way to do it. So I want you to think about the cube roots of 1, or in other words, unity. Right? What are the cubits of unity? Well, unity 1 can be written as e to the power 2 pi n i. And when you do the cube roots, you're basically looking at e to the power 2 pi n 2 pi n i. You could also write it as 2 n pi i. 2 pi n i divided by 3. It could be 0, 1, and 2. Obviously, when n equals 0, you're going to get 1. Not very interesting, right? It's going to give us the same number. But if n is equal to 1, then you're going to get something like this. e to the power 2 pi i over 3. And guess what? This is one of the cube roots of 1. Therefore, when I multiply my number, the cube root, by one of the cube roots of 1, and then cube the result, it's supposed to give me the cube of 2 plus i, which is 2 plus 11i, multiplied by e to the power 2 pi i, which is 1. So it's going to give me the same numbers. So in other words, this is one of the cube roots, and you can find the other cube root by basically multiplying it by e to the power 4 pi i over 3. That's just going to be another cube root, and it's still going to give you the exact same answer. So you can go ahead and simplify it. Well, let me show you how you can do it. Think about this. You can write this as cosine of 2 pi over 3 plus i times sine of 2 pi over 3. As you know, 2 pi over 3 is 120 degrees. Its cosine is going to be the same as negative cosine 60, which is negative 1 half. So you can go ahead and write this as negative 1 half. And this is just going to be root 3 over 2. And if you distribute these numbers, you're going to get another cube root. Let's go ahead and find it. It's going to be negative 1. And then we're going to get a root 3i from here. And a negative 1 half of i minus root 3 over 2. And this is going to give you negative 1 minus root 3 over 2 plus root 3 minus 1 half multiplied by i. And this is just going to be another cube root. And you can find the third one by following the same procedure with 4 pi i over 3. Kind of looks different, right? If you cube this number, is it really going to give you 2 plus 11i? You can test it out. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. And don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. By, by the way, these are results from Wolfram Alpha. As you can see, the top one is approximately 2 plus 1i, which Wolfram Alpha calls the principal root. And this brings us to the end of the video. See you next time. Bye-bye.